Thanks for listening again this week. Let's get this started and keep things under two minutes. I think we'll stay in the same lane as we did last week and focus only on new news for the past seven days. And that news this week seemed pretty good. Although the Ontario government has extended the emergency orders, uh, they've also started to loosen some restrictions as the province slowly starts to come out of this and open up our economy again. And that's just good news for everybody, however you slice it. Conversely, if you're tired of being a at-home teacher, bad news for you this week. Uh, The government, again, is going to stick with a cautious approach to opening schools, and they're going to keep them closed, uh, at least for the balance of this year, and reconsider it again in the fall. Some really great news from the federal government this week when they announced that the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy has been extended until the end of August. This is good for all of us, but the end of August is going to come sooner than you think. Another thing that we might want to consider then, as we're navigating this new reality of our hours of our office and how people are being employed, is the job sharing program. This has been around for a long time, well worth looking into, as this has also been extended to 76 weeks. Another announcement came to me from two clinicians who contacted me this week and asked that I share this with you guys to look into the Canada Emergency Business Account, or SEBA, Uh, subsidy that's available to small businesses. They found it to be uh, enormously helpful as they navigated this process and the eligibility requirements have been changed in the past week. So if you were denied this in the past, look at it again, things could be to your advantage now. The ODA emailed a wealth of information last week if you had a chance to read it all. If you didn't, a few of the things that I found most interesting were number one, it really looks like plexiglass shields at reception are going to become a reality, so that's certainly something to consider. And HVAC, although we don't have any details on it yet, it might be a good time to get in touch with an HVAC specialist who can guide you into understanding what the turnover rate of air in your ops is like. Uh, At some point down the road, there's going to be a regulation in place. Better to know that now than later. Bearing that in mind, though, we don't have a crystal ball. So best practice is to not spend anything, any big spend, unless you're doing it for your own comfort and safety because we just don't know what those regulations are going to look like. They also had a hyperlink in that email for the Center for Disease Control where there was a a piece on helping you identify counterfeit PPE and I can't think of anything more important to us than that right now. Um, That's well worth a look at. And let's remember that the CDC is not Health Canada or the Ministry of Health in Ontario and they've started to relax their guidelines down there. Everybody that I trust up here keeps saying the same thing. Let's just remember that safety is first and be aware of those gray market suppliers. Can you work with that? If you haven't received an invitation yet, you might want to check your spam or you want to get in touch with Lori Houston if you're part of the Muskoka Simcoe Dental Society. Friday at seven o'clock, there's going to be a town hall with David Stevenson, who is the chairman of the Return to Practice Working Group. Well worth attending. Finally, considerations and strategies for a new beginning in dentistry was the focus at Dental Community Resource this week. That's available online at YouTube. Always insightful, no politics, well worth the half hour of your time. Speaking of time, I'm out of it. So stay safe, stay sane, and we are getting through this.